Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you Reaper from the ground up. In addition, we're going to highlight some of the great features added to this newer version, Reaper 5. Now, Reaper is a powerful recording and editing program for both PC and Mac. And what makes it so special is that it's both simple and incredibly customizable. In other words, we can change the program to work the way we want to. So if you're coming from one or more of the popular DAWs and switching to Reaper, you can change all the key commands, toolbars, menus, and even the mouse behaviors to work a way that's more comfortable for you. And if Reaper is your first DAW software, you can still create your own way of working. So instead of you learning Reaper, Reaper can adjust to you. So let's take a look at the basics. When you open Reaper, it looks like this. Right over here is the arrangement window. And to the left is where we have tracks. Now right now there's no tracks, but we can create tracks very easily just by double clicking. Double click, and here it is. So it's very easy to create tracks, and also very easy to delete them. Just hit delete, and they're gone. And one of the great things about Reaper is that tracks will work with anything. There's not MIDI tracks, audio tracks, aux or bus tracks, or video tracks. Any track can do any of those things. In fact, any track can do all those things. So we could have audio, MIDI, video, and a track could be used as a bus or an aux all at the same time. So it keeps it very simple because you don't have to decide what type of track you want to use. You can just create one and decide later. MIDI, audio, video or a bus, or even a folder, which we'll get to later. Now the way Reaper works is that it plays back audio, MIDI, or video from left to right. So any items that are in the arrangement window are gonna play from left to right. So up here, we have the timeline or the ruler. It could be beats, seconds, or time code. So let's drag in some audio. We'll make another track, go to our directory, and right over here, I have a drum beat, a synth line, and a piano. Let's drag them into tracks and see how they play back. We'll start with the drum beat, just drop it right here. Let's see what it sounds like. Now we can add things to this music production by putting new things on new tracks. So let's bring in the synth line. Let's line it up. Let's add another track. Let's add a piano. Place it right here. So as you can see, it's very easy to add sounds on top of each other and create a blend or a mix. Now this audio right here, these three are considered items or media items. We could drag them around just like this. And now it starts earlier. Same with the piano, have it start here. We could delete them by hitting delete. We could undo. We can copy and paste them. Copy, paste it over here. Or we could loop it by dragging over here and pulling it out. Now it loops the audio from over here to over here. We could also fade in or fade out the audio. Now let's grab these items and fade them right from here. So now they're going to slowly fade in. Let's change the fade curve. Now it sounds like this. And we can fade out the same way. Just select them all, drag over here, and fade them out. Let's change the curve to this. And it fades out nice and smoothly. 
Now over here, where our tracks are, this is considered the track control panel. And we can adjust things on our audio right from here. Let's delete this, get rid of our fades, and we can make adjustments right in the track control panel. So let's turn the volume down for our synth line and our piano. So now all we're gonna hear is our drum beat. Now we can slowly bring up our synth line. The same with our piano. To get the perfect mix for our song, we could also mute things on the track control panel. We can mute the drums, and we don't hear the drums. Or we could solo the synth line, and all we hear is the synth line. We could also pan. Let's pan the synth to the left and the piano to the right. And we could separate our sounds by speaker. And we could also add effects to each one of our sounds, like EQ, compression, reverb, delay. But we'll get into that later. But it can all be done right from the track control panel. Effects right here, routing here for sends, and we could use automation or envelopes down over here. Now, besides doing things in the track control panel, we also have a mixer. If we go to view, and choose Mixer, it pops up right down here. This is our mixer. And all the controls on this are similar to over here. Except the fader is a bit nicer looking. Let's pan these back to the middle and readjust them. The mixer just makes it easier to see our levels at a glance and adjust them here. Now right now the mixer is in our dock. Down here, we could have other items in the dock as well, like our routing matrix, properties, media explorer, and just about anything in the view menu. And then we could hide it by unchecking the docker. And it goes back to this, giving us more screen real estate for our track control panel and the arrangement window over here. Now we could also adjust our track heights and track width. So I could change the height of this, like this, or this one, or change the width of it all from here and make it nice and small, or not at all, so we could see more of the arrangement window. Now up here is our toolbar. Here's where we could adjust things or just see visual feedback of what mode we're in. For instance, we could hit lock, and now we can't move our items around because they're locked. Or we could hit it again, and now we can. We could turn our grid off so we don't see the grid, or we'll turn it back on, or a whole bunch of other things, which we'll get into later. But it's also important to note, we could change the toolbars completely. This whole toolbar can be customized. We could delete things, add new things, and we could also make new toolbars. If we right-click up here, we could switch our toolbar to any of our custom toolbars, like this one. And then it does a whole bunch of different things, which we have the ability to customize. Let's put this back to our main toolbar, and it looks like this. Now down over here, this bar over here is the transport bar. Here we can choose to play, stop, or record. Hit this button here for play, or stop, or pause, or we can go into record. This button over here is for looping. So you could choose this, grab a section for looping, and this is gonna loop. Over here we have our time for bars and beats, minutes and seconds. Over here we could change our tempo. So if we make the song faster, let's make it 120. It actually plays back faster. So we can change the tempo on the fly. We can also change our rate right here, which is gonna stretch the audio. So if we go faster, 
plays back faster or slower. Or double click it to put it back to normal. Now we could also zoom really close or really far out using a mouse wheel if you have one or if you're using a trackpad using two finger pinch. Zoom on a section right here, zoom back out, and we can customize how we do that, which we'll get into later. We could right click anything like an item, and we get a menu based on that item. So for media items, we get this menu. For tracks, we get this menu. For our ruler, we get this menu. So if you're ever in doubt of what options you have, just right click it and they'll appear. Now, if you're using a trackpad, you could use two fingers to right click. Like on mute, just right click it. There's a menu just for mute. Or solo. Now, if you hover over something, you get something called tooltips. So if I hover over this, that tooltip shows up, letting us know this is for locking. Or this one is for snapping, or for grid lines. So again, if you're in doubt of what something does, just hover over it, and the tooltips will show up, letting us know what it does. Now, as I said earlier, Reaper is very customizable. So all the menus up here can all be changed. You could choose your own actions. In any of these menus, you could change their names, you could delete them. It's all customizable. And besides changing the menus, you could also change the themes. So Reaper could look very different. This is the default theme for Reaper 5, but we could change it. Go into Options, go to Themes, and choose a different one, like this one here. And now Reaper looks like this. Or this one, Imperial. Take a look at this one's mixer. Pretty sharp looking. Or this one, another pretty cool looking theme. So you can create your own themes or download themes from the internet. Just search Reaper themes and you'll find a whole bunch. Let's go back to the default one right now. Now in each theme, you could also adjust the layout. Like for tracks, if I go to layouts, go to my track panel, you could choose all these layouts for our tracks. I'm using large because it's easier to see, but the standard one is right here, which looks like this. Or we could choose one like this, small full meter, and we see more of a meter, so it's easier to see the level of our track. It's pretty good for recording, so you can see a meter a little bigger as opposed to this, where the meat is a bit smaller. And there's layouts for the mixer as well. Go to the layouts, go to the mixer panel, and all these layouts can be used for the mixer. Right now we're using the session mixer, but we could choose strip, which looks like this, it's a lot thinner. Or large sidebar, it looks like this or any of the other options you prefer. And these are written into the theme. So each theme has their own set of layouts. Now to control Reaper's behavior, we have a bunch of preferences. If you go to our options, go to preferences, you see right here are all the preferences for Reaper. And there's a lot of them. General one, project ones, for audio, for your device, for appearance, Everything here can be changed to how you want to work. So it's completely customizable and it's system wide. So once you set these, Reaper's going to behave that way with your computer. And all your preferences can also be saved. So as you can see, Reaper can be very complex, but it's also very simple when you learn how it all works. And we're going to do that together in this series. Now I've laid out these chapters in a very deliberate way. We're going to start out a little more simply to get you going and it'll get more complex as we move along. So I recommend watching it in order, especially if you're a beginner or new to Reaper. 
Afterwards, you can use each chapter as a reference to refer back to if you need to learn a particular topic in more detail. Now, because Reaper is so customizable, it can get pretty complex. So certain areas of Reaper are not covered in this series, at least not in detail that they could be explored. For that reason, I would recommend checking out the video page on Reaper's main website, or the forum. There are a bunch of topics that are explored a lot more deeply and in greater detail. The mouse modifiers are a great example. I've made 12 videos on this page that just cover customizing your mouse movements, as this customization is very powerful, but it's not for everyone. So I will mention topics like this in this series, but you'll get more detail in the videos on this page, and I'll remind you as we pass through those complex topics. But I would definitely check out or bookmark this video page as we will be adding new videos each month. So anyway, let's start exploring Reaper 5. Let's go. Mm -hmm. 